when he steps on a college campus or university campus, he, he just changes into a different person. He just starts to shine and glow like being a powerful lawyer in a courtroom. He has never unbuttoned his jacket at any meeting at the table. One of the things that Andrew is great at, research. He's a mathematician by trade. He means so much to this church and the community. Uh, he is a giant. Super articulate, very appropriate, very congenial. It's always, everything is kind of presidential. This guy got it going on. This guy is truly an educator. He's, he brightens up a campus. Andrew is exceptionally smart. Exceptionally smart. Dr. Yagini is a man of powerful integrity. Yeah, he's a very good character. People who make a big difference pay a price, and uh, he's paid a price, but he's persevered. And that's what it takes, perseverance. He's a son of a Baptist minister. He loved that little town of Green Pond. There's no city proper of Green Pond. The only marker you will find for Green Pond is that there is the post office, and right next to the post office is the track. And when you cross that track, you're now in Green Pond, South Carolina. He wasn't old enough to go to school, but his mom would take him and let him sit in her classroom. He was a little mischievous. <laughs> He would get into trouble every now and then, but he had a very stern mom who would always keep him in check. Um, he was funny, he was smart, and, um, and he was a very kind-hearted person, even as a child growing up. One of the things that was emphasized in our home was education. My mother was actually my first and second grade teacher. Um, and my last two years in high school, I actually drove a school bus. At 16 years of age, you could drive a school bus. Uh, initially, I was going to major in chemistry. We were doing an experiment with sulfuric acid. I'll never forget it. And I didn't mix it correctly. Chemistry was not what I was going to do. And so I switched from chemistry to mathematics. Police officers suddenly reached for their weapons as a young lady running away from that scene fell to the cement. Two Orangeburg police officers began clubbing her. Two days later, on the campus of South Carolina State University, the South Carolina Highway Patrolmen loaded their weapons with double art shotgun shells for about 10 or 15 seconds, started pumping bullets into the students' bodies. That incident has been called the Orangeburg Massacre. That had an effect on all of us because that was a tragic year for us. Um, that's the year of the Ma Orangeburg Massacre. Um, Dr. Martin Luther King was assassinated that year, as well as Bobby Kennedy. And they was right one after another, March, April, and then June. Andrew's dorm was right across the street from where the students were killed. And the, actually, the high school student who died, died on the steps of their residence hall. So any one of us could have been um, a victim of that massacre. But he's persevered, and that's what it takes, perseverance. He's persevered because of his faith, and because of Abby's faith. They are very faith-based persons, and I respect them wholeheartedly for that. I first met him when he was a college student. We were all very impressed with him. And one of my first jobs was to put together an agency to get beyond some of the racial animus that existed at the time. And we involved Andrew Huguini in that. I fondly remember Dr. Huguini. Uh, he was an outstanding student from the moment that he stepped foot on the campus. The kind of student that you know is something inside them that kind of radiates that this is going to be person that's going to do things. People that have come in his path all the time talk about how he embraced them, whether he was a classroom teacher or an administrator, and he's remained the same person. People like Dr. Wigini are hard to find. Our fraternity is 
you know, based off of manhood, scholarship, perseverance, and uplift. And he represents all of those cardinal principles. I know that Andrew's life is one of service. He was just that kind of guy. He is genuine. Dr. Hugh Guinea is the person you see. He's a country boy from Green Pond. Green Pond, South Carolina. I didn't apply for the presidency at South Carolina State, but they asked that I applied. I applied, and I was named the president of South Carolina State. Dr. Andrew Hugeni um, has almost a cult-like following. I mean, there are lots of folks just love what he meant to the university. When I was a student here 30 years ago, Dr. Hugeni was my landlord. Great landlord. I, you know, I certainly know that we paid our rent on time, but he probably could have evicted us for not following the rules of parties. (laughs) I certainly have uh, considered him a friend and a mentor. I stand on his shoulders. It's just um, unbelievable now to sit uh, where he sat once. One of the biggest strengths that he had, though, was that he had grown through the institutions. He knew the institution from a student perspective. He knew the institution from a professorial perspective and also from an administrative perspective and the enrollment began to climb. That's evident today, because if you're on that campus, you will see you get his sweets. <laughs> I am the traditional daddy's girl. So like everything like my dad did, I wanted to do. So if he went to cut the grass, I wanted to cut the grass. My dad does not play sports at all. We had a basketball goal in the back. Hey, Dad, can you just come shoot with me? He was like, I bet you I'll, I'll beat you. And I was like, nah, you're not going to beat me. You don't even know how to shoot the basketball. But he's a mathematician at heart. Because even though he doesn't know how to, like, he has, like, this overhand, like, shot. But he knew the right angles to, like, hit it off the backboard that it went in every time. So, like, he went, like, 10 for 10. To this day, like, I should have never, like, bet him because he beat me. She and Andrew grew up in Jerusalem Miami Church from infant when they didn't even know they were in the church. They were baptized there and they were married there. In talking with Andrew over the years, I said, well, how did you and Abby meet? He said, we've always known each other. <laughs> they are a team, but they've been together forever, forever. Mrs. Eugenie, to me, was the perfect person to partner with Dr. Eugenie. She's the person Uh, that will give me the advice that I need to hear versus the advice that I want to hear. My family and I love Mrs. Hugini and Dr. Hugini. It's hard to think of one and not even picture the other because they're they're so in tune with each other. I think she works harder than most people that are on payroll up there. One of the things I cherish about our relationship is the fact that our wives became friends. And that, to me, was very, very important. She's been a key player, very supportive. Mom is, means everything to me, yeah. Mom, uh, that's my number one person. The saying is, behind every good man, there's a good woman. And I, and I changed that because they walk together. Uh, they are side by side. When you see one, you see the other one. You know, as we were growing up, people would always put us together. Um, they would say, oh, that's your boyfriend, and they would tease us. And, you know, I didn't want to hear anything about boys at that time. I was <laughs> involved in other things. But uh, everybody always thought that we would be a good match. She is the epitome of what a first lady is and should be. She is the most caring and loving and supportive and hardworking person. Presidencies uh, can be lonely. Uh, Presidencies, you really are in a bubble, and it's good having that person that you can just let your hair down and be who you want to be. <clears throat> Abigail, boy, I tell you, in our darkest days, Abigail Hamilton Hugini showed us that joy does come in the morning. Whoever succeeds Dr. Hugini, they're not succeeding just Dr. Hugini. They're trying to succeed Abigail also. And that's going to be a tough task. My 
applied here, and the rest is history. I see the work that Dr. Eugenie has done at uh, Alabama a and and uh, that he has been a strong leader. In all of our conversations, Dr. Eugenie has always encouraged me, said, look, the, the wars or the battles that you carve out, don't get into meaningless struggles. Don't fight meaningless wars that even if you win, you've lost. For the first three years at Alabama a and it was a fight. But we are warriors. We would not allow anybody to run us away. We were ready to fight. And that's what we did. We fought the first three years to save the institution because the institution was not in the best shape. When he first came on board, there were some, some very big challenges. Challenge, uh, you know, with the board, challenge with the media. Those first couple of years, it was rough. The enrollment was on the decline. We were on financial life support almost. Uh, it was a critical time and it took the kind of leader that was willing to make the hard decisions to right the ship. I never saw him sweat. He always remained cool and calm. And really, it was a cultural change. And Dr. Yukini was a part of that with his leadership style, his relationships with people first. Dr. Hugini came uh, with a plan. It was obvious because it created an environment of stability. The enrollment went up, um, and this is over the course of, of his time. He has been a consequential leader. Alabama a and University, under his leadership, has grown by leaps and bounds. A strong enrollment, infrastructure improvements, strong academic programs, a strong presence in the community. It's a great example to follow. I've watched the students of a and um, surround him and they want to be in his presence and when he's there, he's like a rock star, he's a celebrity, he and Mrs. Eugenie. I couldn't have asked for a better last assignment, a wonderful assignment to have as the capstone of my professional career. The university is is at a level where it's never been before, nationally, internationally, locally. His leadership style elevated the university to greater heights. He was the right person at the right time for the situation we were in. Taking this place in 12 years, um, as they say, from a, a sow's ear to a silk purse, because it is a gem for whoever inherits this institution Well, Andrew, you did it your way. You have contributed to helping build young men and young women to contribute to society. You can't ask for any more. Uh, let this retirement be the beginning of a new life, a new process, new efforts. He deserves um, more than most that I know are given the contributions and the years of contributions he's made. He's President Emerita, so he also has a responsibility to work with us because he carries that designation. That type of institutional memory, that experience, is something that we cannot afford to lose as long as he wants to share. Come back to visit Alabama a and as often as you can to, to be on the other side of it. It has been a phenomenal ride. I have enjoyed it. It's been rewarding. Um, and I wouldn't have it any other way. Just live, enjoy the grandkids. Hey, I'm gonna miss them. He's provided a service, uh, helping people, helping students. And uh, I was just telling him that he doesn't have to look back and say that he uh, didn't do his best. <laughs> advice, I'm jealous. <laughs> what advice? They fought the good fight of life. They made a huge difference in the lives of people. It's something that he has worked for. He has earned it. I know he's going to enjoy it. I know he's going to enjoy those grandchildren. Of course, I know he wants to enjoy his grandchildren and new grandchildren, and and just and just relax. You can only imagine the the of his throughout his career, uh, of the long list of people of lives that he's impacted. He's certainly impacted my life. I really hope he doesn't change his cell phone number. I'm just. Um grateful that, that I got through this without tears because just the thought of them leaving is upsetting to me. To me. He will continue to uh, feed into the lives of many people and share and pour into them because that's his personality. He is going to always pay it forward. 
move to Atlanta. <laughs> That's my number one advice so he can be by the grandkids. Be a wild child again. Use your imagination and just do it. Man, just do it. If I had to again go back and change anything in my life, I would change absolutely nothing. We're gonna miss you, Dr. Eugenie. Don't change your number. Job well done, my friend. Job well done. Andrew was the only one who could finish his pianist, learn how to play the piano. Dr. Eugenie was our play piano at the church. I will share this secret with you. He actually, um, and, and he's going to really hurt me for this, but nobody will know there. He actually has played the piano since he was fifth, in fifth grade, but no one in, uh, knows that <laughs> but me in, in Huntsville. Now you all.